Hey, hey, hey. Um, so I'm Pejman. Uh, this talk is about zero cost regressions. Um, raise your hand if uh, you've made some code change in your life uh, that was supposed to be very innocent, uh, but broke your software. So almost everyone. Um, this um, ha problem happens uh, so often because we don't test our code, right? Um, because we all believe that real men or women uh, test their code in production. Well, not really. We try our best, but at the same time, uh, it's difficult because there are always these unintended side effects of the code changes that we are making. So it boils down to how fast we can find these unintended side effects. If they're after we've deployed our product, then it's very expensive. Uh, so if we can find them before the release, it's better. It's even better when we uh, submit a pull request and then some coworker says, oh, you forgot this. But the problem here is that usually it's very difficult to find all the side effects without even uh, involving someone else. I was uh, working at a medical software company and uh, we had a six million line of code, code base. Every time we were making code changes, because it was a medical software, we had to um, basically wait for our test engineers to go uh, do a thorough testing and then um, give us a you know, green light uh, to go make further changes. And it was frustrating, it was extremely painful. Uh, the wait was uh, pretty much uh, killing us. Um, and it turns out that uh, this is a huge problem in the software industry. Um, on average, it takes 23 days for a uh, software engineer to gain confidence that what they are doing, what they're introducing uh, to their code base is actually working as they intended. Um, it's not like QA engineers don't try to help. They are doing their best, but at the same time, uh, the, 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 the tools that we need to find all these in, uh, unintended side effects are not the tools that QA engineers uh, can uh, run on the, by themselves. So we need um, a way to automate this process without involving QA uh, testers. Now, this, the code you hear uh, on the screen is a very basic uh, function. If I ask you to test this function, you would say, all right, I'll uh, write a unit test for it. And I'll call this function with some input, and then I check uh, if the output matches my expectations. Well, um, the problem is, if you want to make sure that our code works correctly, then we need to test it with more and more um, uh, test cases. And this becomes uh, really problematic if you have hundreds and thousands of test cases. So what we can do is to actually pass each test case to our software and then see what it produces as output. Then we can serialize all this output into a file and then check these files somewhere. When we have a next version of our code, then we have a new set of files so we can compare those uh, uh, with each other. This is actually really uh, problematic because then we end up with so much files that finding the, these differences between them is a full-time job. So can we do better? Well, I've been obsessing with this uh, for a long time, and I came up with a solution. This is um, basically a Tuca library uh, that is uh, open source. So you can actually uh, write uh, a simple workflow that runs your find uh, student with a parameter that you can pass uh, from command line or on the web. And then uh, basically every time that you uh, capture stuff, we serialize them into flat buffers and post the binaries uh, to a web page where you see differences in performance and behavior. We do all of this in real time so that we can give you a feedback of how your software compares to the next version. So um, this tool supports your favorite programming languages as long as it's in C++, Python, Java, and JavaScript. Um, you can run it in any environment and integrate with your favorite tools as long as they are email, Slack, and GitHub. Thank you.